Hey everybody, today we're gonna to talk about schizoid personality disorder. But before we jump into this very important topic, are you new to my channel? Welcome! I release videos on Mondays and on Thursdays, so make sure you're subscribed and have those notifications turned on so you don't miss out. But now on to schizoid personality disorder. In short, the DSM describes it as a pattern of detachment from social relationships and a restricted range of emotional expression, okay? Meaning that someone with SPD, schizoid personality disorder, would prefer to be alone and they would struggle to express much of what they feel, which I can imagine could be really difficult and at times really frustrating for them. But now to get into the actual diagnostic criteria or in other words, what we have to have in order to be diagnosed with schizoid personality disorder, one must have a pervasive pattern of detachment from social relationships and a restricted range of expression of emotions in interpersonal settings, beginning by early adulthood and present in a variety of contexts, meaning it can happen at work, school, and with a variety of people. So it doesn't just happen in one certain scenario. And it has to be indicated by four or more of the following. Number one, neither desires nor enjoys close relationships, including being part of a family, meaning it's not just romantic relationships, they just really don't enjoy any kind of relationship with anybody. Number two, almost always chooses solitary activities. Number three, has little, if any, interest in having sexual experiences with another person. And this is not to be confused with like asexuality or aromantic people, this is specific to schizoid personality disorder. Number four, they take pleasure in few, if any, activities. Number five, lacks close friends or confidants other than first degree relatives. Number six, appears indifferent to praise or criticism of others, meaning they don't really care if someone's saying nice or mean things about them. Either way, they're just like, eh. Number seven, shows emotional coldness, detachment, or flattened affectivity, meaning that they don't really show many facial expressions of emotion. That's what flattened affect means, when we could be really upset, but our face just looks like this. Also, SPD must not occur exclusively during the course of schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, depressive disorder, or anything with psychotic features, or other psychotic disorders, or the autism spectrum disorder. And this is important to remember because you can see how some of the symptoms that we just talked about can overlap with these other diagnoses. Those with SPD can have a lot of difficulty expressing anger, even when they're provoked. And this is why so many people will think that they don't have any emotions at all, which we know isn't true. And they can also seem like they're directionless, just kind of appearing to drift from their goals. They can also appear to be very passive. Like I said, even though something may be upsetting or something's happening in our life, we can be like, uh, so they don't really get upset about any shifts or hard life events that come their way. Therefore, it can be hard for them to connect socially and they lack the skills needed to appropriately interact with those around them. Because if everything around us, we just feel like, eh, most people don't feel that way. And it can be really hard for others as well as us to feel connected when every time we're just like, well, no big deal, whatever, I don't really care, hmm. And that can be really hard. This is also why those with SPD work best alone, where there is no need for them to interact with others while completing their work. And when under a lot of pressure or experiencing a lot of stress, those with SPD can have brief psychotic episodes. These can last anywhere from minutes to hours. And that's why it's so important to see a mental health professional for a while before you accept this diagnosis. It is so often missed completely or misdiagnosed as something else. And on that note, let's get into differential diagnosis, which is just a fancy way of saying, how do we make sure we're taking into consideration all the symptoms that someone's having and giving them the correct diagnosis? When it comes to autism spectrum disorder, it can be really hard to tell with those who are not very impaired by their ASD. But for those who show significant impairment due to ASD, they will have more difficulty with social interaction, communication, and repetitive behaviors, which are not part of schizoid personality disorder. And I imagine if you're like me, as you're thinking about this and hearing the diagnostic criteria, you wonder how schizoid personality disorder can possibly be different from avoidant personality disorder because they both just don't seem to like being around others. Well, SPD doesn't have the fear of being embarrassed or being found inadequate like avoidant personality disorder does. SPD instead has more pervasive detachment and almost no desire to socially interact. 
Another similar diagnosis, schizotypal personality disorder, is different because it tends to have more cognitive and perceptual distortions. So we think and see things a little distorted. It's a little different than other people see them. And last, it's important to know that just because someone is a quote unquote loner or never seems to be around others does not mean they have schizoid personality disorder. It only means they have SPD when their antisocial traits become inflexible and are maladaptive, meaning that they don't really fit in with what's going on around them in their environment. And they have to cause significant impairment in functioning. Now, schizoid personality disorder can first show itself in childhood and adolescence through our desire to be alone a lot, have bad, if any, relationships with our peers and underachievement in school due to our general passivity about things. Remember, it's like, Ugh, I could care less really. Now let's get into the most important portion of this video, treatment. Now, while there hasn't been too much research into the treatment of SPD, mostly because those with SPD are not upset by their isolation or lack of relationships. Therefore, they don't really reach out for help that often. But one form of treatment that can help is short-term talk therapy. As long as we feel we're able to trust our therapist, we can benefit from it and it gives us a safe place to challenge any of the misconceptions we may have about our relationships and those around us. You know, due to our isolation or even psychosis or paranoia, it can be nice to have someone we can kind of bounce those thoughts off of. Overall, treatment for this is not aimed at curing the patient. Instead, it's aimed at giving them a place to talk about all that may be stressful, like not being able to express emotions, for example, and offering up differing views of life and certain situations. In a way, it just gives us a place to vent and receive helpful tools. Medication is also ineffective, unless the person with SPD also struggles with anxiety or depression or something else as a result of their symptoms. And since the psychosis that could be part of SPD doesn't last very long, remember it was like minutes to maybe hours, medication for that isn't always necessary, but it could be helpful to some if you find your psychosis happening with more frequency and staying for longer periods of time. So if you or someone you love struggles with some of the effects of having schizoid personality disorder, know that therapy can help us talk things out, gain new perspectives, and better manage any of the symptoms that we personally find upsetting. But we shouldn't try to force someone to change. If they are not bothered by their SPD, we shouldn't try to make them fix something that they don't really see as broken. And I know that can be hard, but it's just really important to hear because like I've said throughout this whole video, a lot of it is just very passive. They don't really care and we can't force someone to care. This video has been brought to you by the Kenyans on Patreon. If you would like to support the creation of these mental health videos, click the link in the description and check it out. So many of you have asked me to create this video, so I hope you found it helpful. And as always, I wanna hear from you. Have you been diagnosed with schizoid personality disorder? What's it been like for you? Are there treatment options that you found helpful? Let me know in those comments down below and I will see you next time. Bye.